statically typed languages or dynamically typed languages, you're never going to get developers to agree on which one is best. And the same can be said for IDEs. There are so many out there. They're all really great, but you tend to fall in love with one and use it for everything. And for me, that love is IntelliJ. Today, we're going to take a look at some benchmarks and performance improvements that I've noticed when using IntelliJ on the new M1 Max. Hey guys, welcome back to DevTech. Today, we're taking a look at IntelliJ and how it performs on the M1 Max. I've been really impressed with it so far, but I haven't been able to quantify just how much I love it on this new hardware. So today, let's take a look at some of the benchmarks and general performance improvements that I've noticed when switching over. Now, I love and use IntelliJ every single day, whether it's for backend development, taking notes, or mobile development, and it's even the IDE of choice for Android development specifically. It's just the type of thing that I've fallen in love with. I like the shortcuts. I've liked the way that it's mapped out. I think one thing everyone can agree on though is that IntelliJ requires a lot of system resources in order to run smoothly. So I know everyone has concerns when switching over to a new architecture, a new piece of hardware, especially when it comes to their development environment. The first thing I will report is that IntelliJ has not crashed once while I've used it these past couple weeks. Its performance overall has been better. Everything has been better than the 2019 i9 64 gigabyte version of the MacBook Pro that I was coming from. Everything feels snappy. I haven't seen to get into any kind of weird situations. I've been able to generally configure it the same way that I had it on other machines. Let's jump into it. Okay, so I have IntelliJ open on the 2019 i9 MacBook Pro. This is uh, my server project. It is written primarily in Kotlin. It has a lot of different features. I won't go into all of them, but it's got authentication and database and image processing and all kinds of really cool stuff baked into it. It's not an overly huge project, but it's definitely uh, several thousand lines of code with, with quite a few unit tests. Um, so just kind of going into uh, how I lay out my IDE, in case you're wondering. I don't do tabs at the top. I typically do two windows when, when programming. I use my keyboard pretty much extensively for everything. Uh, so like when I'm going to recent files or when I'm uh, searching globally for a particular test or, or function, whatnot, this is generally how I have it laid out when I'm using it. Uh, so to first start off with some tests, um, again, this is the i9 version. The first thing we're going to do, and this was an interesting one that I ran into since I've been using it now for quite a while. The first thing that I've noticed, if I go into a class that has... Um, let's go into the user handler test. This is a test class that's got quite a bit of tests in it. So there's a lot of uh, linting and error checking that goes on inside of this class. So I'm going to compare it on the i9 versus the M1 Max. The first thing you'll notice here, um, I, I, I knew there's a, I could feel a general snappiness, like improvement on the M1 Max, but I, I had to figure out ways to quantify that. So one of the first ones I noticed was uh, missing import statements, right? So if you're familiar with Java or Kotlin, whenever you don't have a proper import, you'll get a compiler error and typically your IDE helps you along the way with those kinds of things. So you'll notice here, and I'll set a timer on the screen. When I delete these, the second I delete them, we're going to take count of how long it takes for uh, the, the, lints, the lint checks and the error checks to complete. So starting... You'll notice it took it took quite a while for it to actually like go through because what what's, what ends up happening is every single one of these classes and annotations and everything you see on the screen has to be um, independently verified, right? So it's it's actually a pretty taxing uh, operation for the 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 compiler to do. So 
I'll add everything back. And there we go. So run this test one more time. Okay, add everything back. All right, so that was the first thing I noticed. So on the i9, you know, you can see it's definitely a, a lag. Uh, and again, these IDEs are basically uh, configured the same way. I only do things like remove the top tabs. I don't like using the mouse, like I said. Um, and I generally just leave the layouts alone um, just because it, it works for me as it is. Uh, the other big thing that I've noticed from a performance standpoint is, is just running tests or the application itself. So what we'll do is double click this Gradle task, it'll go into running tests, and then from there we will time. Uh, Gradle will show how long it took, but that's actually a lie. We'll, we'll put our own timer on this once it starts and, and measure, measure the time. We'll run this test three times. Okay, that was iteration number one. Iteration number two. And iteration number three. And now that we're done writing those three tests, I can hear the fans running on this uh, i9, the bottom of the device is registering at 109 degrees Fahrenheit, 109 degrees Fahrenheit. I use the temp reading and I measure the very center of the bottom of the laptop. Okay, so now we're over to the 2021 M1 Max MacBook Pro with 64 gigs of RAM and a four terabyte SSD. So you'll see here, IntelliJ is configured exactly the same. Uh, no tabs up at the top. You can see like I've been working in this project uh, for quite a while. Uh, as, as you can see by my recents list, this has just been something I've been working on quite a bit. Um, and the first test we're gonna do is the same file, same state. Uh, we checked out the code the same point in time. We're, what we're gonna do is, this is the user handler tests. This has a ton of tests in it, a ton of references to different different items. So what we do is we delete this and measure how long it's gonna take for the errors and lint checks to pop up. All right, and you can see, like, I, I, like I've been saying, that's adding it back. As I've been saying, like there's this general feeling of more snappiness. It's definitely quicker. And I, I had to work with IntelliJ now for a couple of weeks to really start to feel out what those performance enhancements were that I was getting, like feeling, you know? And it's just those everyday things where it's like, oh, I'm missing an import or like some rep, I'm refactoring something and something gets renamed improperly and like it, it cascades some errors. Like that's the general snappiness I'm talking about. Like, It's just faster. It's definitely faster than adding it back. And then also what we're going to do now is just run the tests in this uh, for this entire project three times in a row in succession. And then we're going to measure the heat coming off of the device after that is done. And it's just already done. Okay. One last time. Okay, we're done. Eighty-seven degrees Fahrenheit. No, I started up these tests both from idle. Uh, it's just 
the I-9 seems to idle at a much higher temperature and then once you start really hitting it hard with compiling and tests and stuff like that, it, it really starts to heat up like another 10 to 20 degrees. Um, yeah, so like those are the two primary things I wanted to show you was like it really does compile faster and it really does lint check and error check faster. And those are the two things really that you'll start to care about as as you work through your daily items. You know, maybe you're not writing tests, but maybe you're just compiling the project. This is That's all the same to me. Um, but those are the two primary things that I've noticed. Other things that I've noticed that I don't really want to measure, but will like have, I've felt like they're faster. When the i9 MacBook Pro starts to get really hot, you do start to lose performance, just generally speaking throughout the system. And one of the things that starts to perform more poorly is even just like graphical feedback on the screen. So one thing you'll notice here, like, you know, we're, we're not heated up at all. The device is just idling. When I go to close windows, I'm just using command W. It's just fast. It's interesting because one of the things that I've noticed on the i9 is when I start really compiling a lot and running the project hard and I'm just like going, 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 going. The second I start like adding extra windows and then closing other windows. So let's see here, I've got four panes open. And then I just go to close the other window. Like you'll, on the, on the M1 Max, like you're seeing right here, it's just fast. But what I've noticed on the i9 is when Again, this is only happens when you're like really, really doing a continuous like development cycle. Closing the windows takes a while. It's a weird thing. Like, I wouldn't expect closing windows to take a while, but it is really interesting. It's, it's definitely the case um, that that I've, that I've noticed at least. Okay, so another thing that I haven't really quantified, but I definitely have noticed a huge performance improvement on is one heat. You hear me talk about it in every single one of my videos, but the heat from debugging on an i9, if I go and hit a breakpoint and hold that breakpoint for a really long time, the i9 starts to get hotter. And I haven't noticed that on the M1 Max. When I stop on an instruction and I hold it for a really long time because I'm like looking into an object or whatever it is, it doesn't start getting hotter and hotter. It just stops and it pauses that instruction. Like I would expect it to. Um, so it's just really nice to see that. So uh, here's another thing that I've noticed um, when I go to start the debugger, you'll have to wait for my environment pack payload to decrypt and whatnot for the server to actually start up. But I'll open up Postman, I'll fire off a request, and it's just bam. You notice how quickly we fell into that breakpoint? Here's the other thing I noticed is a lot faster too. Watch what happens when I skip to the next instruction. It's so quick. It's so quick when I skip to the next next instruction. I find that that on the i9 is really not um, not good, for lack of better words. The i9 really does seem to have issues when I when I jump from one breakpoint to the next. There's always like this very long pause before I get to the next thing. And and generally speaking, like on the on the M1 Max, I haven't noticed that at all. It's just like bam, 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 bam. So the things that we were able to quantify were heat and general speed. Um, you can see that the M1 Max performs better in every regard as far as temperature and speed. I was actually really happy to be able to come up with a way to quantify some of the general uh, snappiness that I'm feeling. Like all of the better performance and whatnot. So it was nice to be able to actually capture that in some real benchmarks today. So I'm happy to report that this channel has now made its first $100. I know it's not a ton of money compared to some of the other publishers that are out there on the platform, but I definitely want to give it all back. And today I'm going to give away a DOS keyboard. So DOS keyboard has no idea that I'm doing this. Um, and they're definitely not a sponsor of this channel, but it's hardware that I, I 100% stand behind. I believe in the product. I think it's great, especially for software engineers. I use mine every day and I have for the past three years. I own two, actually, a brown switch and a blue switch. Um, I ended up going with the quieter version just because 
I found that it was a little bit too annoying on Zoom calls. But other than that, like having a mechanical keyboard is absolutely phenomenal. Their build quality is amazing. The weight is perfect. I love that it doesn't move around when you type on it. Um, and it's just one of those things, it's effortless to use. It's something that I can approach and get on every single day and not think about. And as a software engineer, that's exactly what I need in order to be productive. So here's how it's gonna work. Email me, that's it. Uh, check out the email listed on the screen. Send me an email. In one week, we will choose one of you to receive a DOS, for, uh, DOS keyboard for professional edition. You can choose either the Mac or the Windows version. It retails for $169. We will only choose one of you to receive this because it's literally the only money this channel has made. And um, you have to have a US-based mailing address. That is the one requirement here. We're not going to ship anything internationally at this point just because of cost. Um, and like I promised, we're giving everything back to you guys. Uh, so make sure you take the time to subscribe, leave comments, let me know what else, other kind of content you wanna see. Um, and we're definitely gonna be doing more of this in the future, so stick around. You've been watching DevTech, guys. Make sure you take the time to like, subscribe, and leave any comments of future content you want me to start producing for you. Appreciate it.